it's not really ancient. So they were nomadic, this group. And uh, there was a woman in the group, in the tribe, we'll say the tribe, the clan. And she was uh, the chieftains, the tribal chief, the leader, his wife. And she was quite beautiful, dark hair, very, very generous soul, very generous, kind heart. And she, uh, of course, they married young. And, you know, people didn't live as long as they lived now. So when we say that she was nearing 30, that is old for that time. And when, so when they got uh, married, they had two children very quickly, two boys. Uh, but after that, she did not produce any more children. The boys uh, died of uh, illness, and which was quite rare, actually, because there was not the same sort of infections and things that you have now. It was quite rare to die of illness. And because you lived outside not outside, there was shelters, there were shelters, because you, but it was still, you were in the elements, in the elements, there was, uh, you were tough, you were physically tough, so you didn't succumb to illnesses very easily, but uh, these boys did. So there is some question about that, whether they were poisoned, whether uh, they had wounds that became infected because it was badly looked after, deliberately not looked after well. So these children, two boys, they died. And of course, as we said, she had not uh, produced any more children after that. And so for her, there was this incredible sadness, not just because she had lost the two children, but that there was no one for the husband, who was the chieftain, to pass on to. No heir, if you like. But not only that, there was, for her, her responsibility to her group, her clan, her tribe, was very strong for her. And so there was an element of her letting the whole tribe down because this was seen as uh, a failing on her behalf. And, of course, women were the only ones that could produce children, so it was important that they fulfilled their role. Even though she had fulfilled her role, uh, these children had since died. So grief became so great that uh, she became almost incapacitated. So when they moved, she couldn't even make the walk. They had to build a pallet and... Slider. Yes, on the pallet. So she became completely incapacitated. She couldn't really eat. And this actually brought a real darkness over the, the whole tribe. It was as if, with her kind and generous heart, she was the one holding the light for the whole group, the tribe whether they had placed that light into her or whether she automatically or naturally had it, that, of course, is debatable. So they had uh, a shaman, but as a shaman cannot really interfere unless they are asked, then it is not interfering, it is acting on the behest. They cannot go forward and, and interfere. And it was interesting that it took it to get to this point before the chieftain went to ask for help. This point. So when they had only the two children, she had no more, they didn't ask for help. When the children died and she fell into grief, they didn't ask for help. It had to get to this point where the light of the whole tribe was failing. Then he went to the shaman. And he asked for help. And it was at this point that 
you can see that what we are talking about with our tradition that the person themselves needs to lead the one that needs the healing or wants the healing they need to lead so it wasn't so much lead the healing so it wasn't so much that the shaman had to perform a ceremony or had to perform a ritual or had to go into a trance or anything like that they had to somehow get the the woman the chieftain's wife into a state where they could get up and lead their own healing and in the getting up lead the healing of themselves but also of their tribe and that was the journey of the shaman and this woman it was not about healing the woman and producing more children it was about guiding this woman leading helping this woman to get up and start to look for her own healing so how did that happen the uh the shaman of course uh went into a journey state uh went into a trance state to connect with the spirit of the tribe not the spirit of the woman or the spirit of the children but the spirit of the tribe and in that space it was discovered that there was a wrong committed within the tribe and that wrong had not been acknowledged and this woman the tri- the chieftain's wife because she was the light of the tribe because of her kind and generous heart she had taken that energy now she didn't know what this wrong was her husband knew what it was and he didn't act appropriately she didn't know what it was so once the shaman knew that and was able to understand that aspect what had happened and what could be done to remedy that situation or placate the energy that had been created she was able to call the chieftain and the perpetrators of the event to her so she didn't go to them she called them to her and that's a very important uh thing to understand because we are talking about the chieftain so in normal circumstances she would go to the chieftain but in this circumstance it was very important that he came into her space and the perpetrators came into her space none of them knew that any of the others had been invited as soon as they all turned up they knew that she knew and she probably knew from the beginning but again things have to play out things have to be processed so she calls them in there in her her shelter and she doesn't need to say anything she just sits there the fire is going and she just sits there she doesn't even really look at them she's just looking into the fire and of course it all comes tumbling out the perpetrators know why they're there they say why they're there and the chieftain however is the one that needs to take full responsibility because he did not act when he should have acted and he did not act and that as a chieftain was a a fatal failing for the the whole group for the chieftain not to act when he needed to act and so without even saying anything he leaves calls uh, the group together explains the situation and tells them what happened what he did what he didn't do and now how he is going to make remedy the situation so these perpetrators are banished from the group to fend for themselves this of course causes distress but uh, it is understood then the shaman goes to the wife and only then does she go to the wife and she sits with the wife and she holds the wife's hand 
And she goes into like a trans journey type uh, space herself. And it's as if the information is being transmitted to the wife. Not about the perpetrators, not about the husband, but about the energy that was in the tribe that caused her light to go out. And it wasn't the death of the children that caused her light to go out. It was this situation that caused her light light to go out so she was able to get up exist once more in in the group she was still suffering the grief of the the loss of the children but she was able to regain herself because herself had been lost when this situation had occurred and it had been mistaken for the grief of losing the children. And of course, then that had made the situation that had called the perpetrators, that situation where the husband did nothing, it had made that much more because the grief was piled onto that. So it had become so much bigger. So in this situation, the wife was... Uh, freed, if you like, from that burden. Of course, she still grieved for her children, but the grief was more of a natural grief. It was an understanding of the mortality of humans, of the difficulty of their life, and the realization that it wasn't just her children that died. There were others that had died. And that was the thing that got her over to the other side, if you like. And, of course, as in all good stories, there is a happy ending because of then she was able to produce another two children. One boy, one girl. And there was an heir, and then there was the, the girl who was able to provide uh, solace and love and, and what have you. So the thing with this is, the interesting thing is, it wasn't what was seen that was the problem. It was what was had not been seen and had been hidden that was the problem. So if the shaman was just focused on the woman, then they would only have seen what was upsetting and what was seemingly grieving the woman but they didn't they viewed it as a tribal thing not as an individual thing and what's interesting about that is that for many people the problems that they have in their life you can never ignore the tribal aspect and by that we mean ancestral you can never ignore that it's not always the problem but you can never ignore it because, uh, and, and when we say ancestral, we don't necessarily mean their direct uh, family members. It can be an energy of that particular group. So let's say that they are, um, they came, they are uh, white and they were in an area where there was slavery. They might not have been slavers but they are in that energy because they are white. So that ancestral energy that is around them is going to have an effect on them. Do you see what we mean? So journeying, especially as a shaman, or doing work as a shaman, it's incredibly important to be able to see the whole picture and the only way you can do that is to have no expectations of what is the problem you must let spirit open up to show you what the problem is <laughs>